Right, here we are for turntable update number two. Um, if you've seen the first video, you'll know that I was having to use cheap uh, interconnects uh, between the turntable and the preamplifier, and between the preamplifier and uh, my main amplifier. Now, uh, the, the phono preamplifier I'm using at the moment is actually my NAD integrated amplifier, being used purely for its phono stage. So it is basically a standalone uh, phono preamplifier. Now, this might not seem like the most exciting video you're ever going to watch. You're going to see a bloke fit some new interconnects to a turntable and to an integrated amplifier. Yep, it's going to be pretty boring, but I intend to make videos about every single upgrade that I do to my turntable, to my vinyl setup. I might even start calling this a rig, a vinyl rig. Multiple components, it feels kind of like a rig. Lots of different bits and pieces to make it all work and uh, tailor the sound to your own personal preference. So, I need to turn it around, so uh, here goes. Right, now we have the equipment uh, turned around. Uh, first things first, you can see that the uh, Russ Andrews tall light platform that the turntable is sitting on actually has three legs. It's to do with vibration control, three legs uh, always gives better sound than four, in my experience, and certainly the ethos behind that particular platform. Now, onto the interconnects. Currently using these bog standard RCA patch lead type leads. Absolute cheap and nasty rubbish that they give away three with stuff. This is absolutely crippling the sound quality and uh, needs to be replaced. Now I have managed to find, after searching long and hard in the attic, some nice quality uh, Kimber cables which I've shown uh, in the previous video and I have say multiple sets of these. They're, they don't look much. They, you look at them and think, is that it? It's just a really basic wire that's sort of plaited together. Uh, the weave is basically a cancellation weave, which is why the cable has no uh, shielding on it. But the sound quality of these cables is exceptionally good. Let's plug them in here. As I said, the video hugely exciting, seeing somebody plug uh, cables into the hi-fi equipment. But that's what we're doing. So, instant improvement in sound quality over the patch leads. In fact, the difference in sound quality is huge compared with these uh, cheap and nasty things. Do yourself a favour if you're using these, get some better interconnects. Now, for the very long interconnect, I actually found a new set in the garage. Now, these are actually for a car audio fitting kit, and they're about five metres long, and they're cheap. I mean, the whole Fitting kit only cost about £20 and it had speaker wire and battery wire and all sorts of things in it. So they're cheap, but they're still much, much better than the awful that freebie patch leads that I've got here. And these are pretty terrible. These are significantly better. Also a lot shorter, which probably helps uh, things. So again, they need to be plugged into the uh, tape out. And... Uh, and that's it. So, as I said, very quick video, not the most exciting video ever, but uh, I've now upgraded the sound quality of my system. And that's the point. Putting these wires in has upgraded the sound quality of my vinyl replay by some margin. And it's important to get across that this isn't just about technical stuff like, all oh, the treble's better, or all oh, the bass is a bit better, all oh, the voice is a little bit more natural, there's less sibilance or whatever. The main difference, the thing you really notice straight away, is the extra energy in the sound. It's how much more real the sound is. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's more musical, it moves along better, better rhythm and timing. It's about the realism, and it's about how musical it is. Not technical things here and there. It's about looking at it holistically and, uh, and getting the benefit from it. And as I say, if you're using patch leads, you really do need to replace them with some better cable. And it needn't be expensive. I mean, this blue cable is uh, pretty cheap. It's nothing special. And it's still significantly better than the cheap patch lead. Now here we are at the end of the video. And if anything can be learned from it, it's simply that interconnects do matter. If you're using bog standard RCA type patch leads like this, do yourself a favour and replace them with something better and it needn't be something that's very expensive as I say it could be something fairly cheap and I say as long as it's sort of got big bold chunky wiring and some shielding you'll get quite an improvement in sound quality never overlook the cabling 